Welcome to our podcast. This is another recorded episode of Stay Classy San Diego, sponsored by Max Lux Media at maxluxmedia.com and Barn Time Productions at barntimemusic.com, with your host being myself, Steve Wire, a freelance reporter. This podcast is dedicated to healthy dialogue around all things local policy in the North County San Diego area. Join us weekly as we interview political leaders, analysts, professionals, and community members on issues ranging from homelessness to housing density to elections. Well, um, let's get right into it. So yeah. uh, on today's episode of Stay Glassy San Diego, we have Carl DeMaio. Um, Carl hosts a radio show, The Carl DeMaio Show, on News Radio 600 KOGO. He's also founded and served as chairman of Reform California, a conservative political action committee. He's a former San Diego city councilman and a former mayoral candidate. And he's a member of the Republican Central Committee um, here in San Diego. So um, today we're bringing on Carl to talk about some of the election outcomes that happened um, that we saw last week that have still been rolling into this week. And I guess the first question I have for you, Carl, is um, nationally, um, and I know we're going to try to keep things local, but nationally there was sort of this conception of a red wave that we were going to see. And the um, thought or notion that's being advanced by many after the election is that the red wave sort of didn't fully materialize. In San Diego County specifically, though, uh, did this happen? Um, did Republicans w- win the key contest they were supposed to win? And why or why not? Well, first, uh, congratulations on the podcast. I, I love the idea of um, local media. It's so uh, needed, and we don't have enough uh, media capacity on local um, stories and local issues. So congratulations. Uh, first and foremost, no, the wave did not materialize. And I think the reason why is... Uh, primarily that Republicans did not have solutions to the issues that people were concerned about. Um, And and that was very frustrating to watch uh, that all play out. Um, The House Republicans uh, created something called Commitment to America. Um, And I can tell you right now, no one who's watching this podcast probably can name a single reform that was included in the Commitment to America. But back in 1994, there were solutions in something called the Contract with America, a balanced budget amendment, uh, welfare reform with the welfare to work requirement, um, term limits. These uh, uh, 10 items in the Contract with America were solutions. They were specific. Even Donald Trump provided you know, bold solutions. I mean, think about it. Build a wall and make Mexico pay for it. Um, I think that Democrats do the... Um, solution business uh, remarkably well because, again, I don't agree with their solutions. They, they actually are, are detrimental. But when they say cancel $10,000 of student loan debt, that's pretty darn specific. Uh, so I think that that's the real reason why Republicans did not perform to expectations. I mean, hey, the, the House majority still switches, and that's a good thing. It's a check on one-party control in Washington, and that's always hel- healthy. And uh, surprise, surprise, California uh, was actually the decider of who got to be the House majority. In 2020, no one really noticed this, but it was a big accomplishment. Republicans in California picked up four congressional seats. The last time we picked up even one congressional seat was 1998, but we got four. And so that was a big uh, shift in 2020. And the question was, could we retain those four seats in 2022, despite the fact that redistricting was not very favorable? Um, And we did retain all four of those seats in California. And as of right now, the taping of this podcast, uh, my good friend John Duarte in the Central Valley is uh, leading uh, his Democrat opponent, which would be a net pickup of one seat. So had we not retained those four seats, though, Republicans would not be mathematically able to get the House majority. So um, I, I, I do want to acknowledge the frustration and the disappointment that national Republicans have to be held accountable for. Um, but here in California, uh, California grassroots Republicans did their job and we helped hand the gavel uh, to um, um, uh, or take the gavel out of the hands of, of Nancy Pelosi. And that's always great. Sure. So, Carl, you um, you noted sort of the specifically like the, the national wave that we're talking about sort of not materializing. But you've been working to advance Republican candidates and conservative issues across the country. And um, some of the races, as you said, mainly in, in the state of Cal- mainly in the state of California, um, we've, we've really fixated um, our focused our attention on California. 
sure. because we feel abandoned by the national party. And we, we we also believe that the Republican Party is part of the problem here in California. The state party is inept. And um, in most regions, the local party is non-existent. And so we want to rebuild infrastructure and capacity. Um, and we've been doing that here in San Diego, South Orange County, South Riverside County. But let me, let me just point out here in San Diego, the second part of your first question before we move on, um, Republicans did pretty well uh, in uh, San Diego County. Think about it. Uh, if you had come into this election cycle saying that Republicans were going to win the Chula Vista mayor's race, win the Escondido mayor's race, retain a council majority in Oceanside, retain the mayor's seat and a council majority in Carlsbad, win the Jim Desmond seat by 20 points, and remember, the Jim Desmond seat is a Democrat-leaning seat on the County Board of Supervisors. Um, I would have said, wow, that would be wonderful. Uh, those would be really good goals to set. Sure. Um, certainly, my goal is always to run quality candidates in every single available seat, whether it's water board and school board all the way up to U.S. Congress. Um, and that's you know always a struggle, getting good people to step forward and then getting the infrastructure and the resources so that they can get their message out. But in San Diego County, we made a lot of progress this past cycle, um, and, and, and I want to acknowledge that, and I want to thank the grassroots volunteers and a lot of hardworking candidates for that happening. Sure. So on the one hand, as you mentioned, some of the local races did go the Republicans' way. When you look at the mayoral races in Carlsbad, Vista, San Marcos, Escondido, Poway, El Cajon, um, Chula Vista, a couple other cities that I'm not mentioning, um, the mayoral races um, did, in many cases, go the Republicans' way. Some of the larger regional races did not. Um, for instance, the uh, Brian Marriott, Mike Levin campaign over in um, 49 and um, in District 38, which is what I cover a lot since it covers uh, my home city here of Encinitas, the um, Catherine Blakespear, the, the current yeah. mayor, was able to defeat Republican challenger Matt Gunderson. So on the one hand, some of the regional results seem um, a little more challenging for Republicans. Some of the local results are more favorable. Um, what do you make of either of those outcomes um, that I've sure? And, and and remember, uh, we knew that those seats were were uh, target seats. It would be hard to win them, but we needed to compete for them. Um, and I think in Matt Gunderson's case, um, he worked really hard. Uh, I think that you know he he ran a good campaign, um, but in both those er both those seats, the areas that it overlays, there's not a whole lot of infrastructure. I mean. The Republican Party has allowed its volunteer base to atrophy, its small dollar donor base to dry up. Uh, it has not uh, invested the same way that Democrats have in data systems to really understand the swing voter in those areas. Um, and, and Democrats, as I mentioned, have been much more aggressive with um, you know, these big, bold socialist ideas. Uh, they're crazy. Uh, but they're they're offering really big ideas that um, some people get sucked into and bamboozled by. Um, so I think that uh, those seats are still winnable uh, in the right cycle with the right candidates. For Brian Marriott, it's his third uh, attempt. Um, he was a lackluster candidate. Uh, he really didn't paint in bold and bright colors. Uh, wasn't very uh, exciting. Um, I think we probably uh, would do better with another candidate in that seat because Mike Levin is beatable. He's very extreme left. He does not really care for the uh, constituent issues. We get lots of complaints from that area. So uh, I think that both of these seats are going to be target seats going, going forward. Um, and Republicans need to do better communicating and connecting with coastal Republicans. Um, co uh, sorry, not coastal Republicans, coastal Republicans, independents, and, and, and conservative Democrats. Uh, I, I do believe that the issue of the environment, uh, public safety, um, you know, the homelessness issues, these are issues that Republicans have actually good solutions on uh, and far better than the Democrats. And they need to get out there and start talking about those solutions um, with passion. And so I think some of these coastal areas are winnable areas for us, um, but but it's going to take a change in the Republican Party. That's something that we've been fighting for. That's why we're we are not a Republican organization. We're Reform California, 
And we believe the way to reform California is to first uh, kick the Republican Party in its rear end and, and get it to to do a better job. Yeah. I mean, there's sort of this notion with the Marriott Levin race that, uh, you know, um, in the primary there, at least a Bartlett, who was uh, Marriott's challenger at the time, called him a perennial loser. You know, the guy like can't win a campaign to save his life kind of thing. And then he comes in the third time. It, it's pretty close. But at this point, do you think Republicans are sort of ready to move on from Marriott and and challenging. Oh, that, look, I, I was ready to move on from Marriott um, uh, last time. Yeah, uh, I was not impressed by him. And by the way, I was an early endorser of Marriott in 2020. Um, and I uh, did not like the lackluster campaign he ran. He served up soft serve vanilla ice cream in a, in a cup with no cone. It was just so blah. Uh, and we need candidates who are going to be uh, uh, fighters, who are going to let the voters know that they have a passion for a, a, a whatever issue that they are driving uh, and are excited by, because voters respond to that. Um, instead, this guy seemed like one of these male, pale, and stale empty suits, um, you know, that would you know uh, go to Washington and just fade into the woodwork. I don't think that's what the swing voters want. They want someone who's going to make their lives better, actually try to do something different on the issues that they care about. I mean, think about it. The issue of homelessness, crime, the failing schools, uh, and the fact that, yes, we still have lingering environmental issues uh, that could easily be addressed and solved. I mean, think about the, the Tijuana sewage that contaminates, uh, contaminates our beaches and bays. Uh, Democrats have presided over that and done nothing about it for decades. It'd be great to have a Republican say, a la Brian Bilbray, how he got his start in the 80s, say that this is absolutely unacceptable. This doesn't make for good neighbors. We're not going to let this sewage you know, shut down our beaches from Imperial Beach to Coronado. And a lot of, a lot of times, depending upon the tides, it gets much farther north into uh, Del Mar, Solana Beach, Encinitas. And so we've got to have a better solution than, than the uh, uh, neglect that we've seen on that issue. So sure. um, homelessness, you know, we, we you want to talk about an environmental issue in, in addition to a human crisis, um, you know, fecal matter, uh, used uh, uh, syringes, uh, urination, um, all of these things are about the environment. Uh, and, and and it creates an unhealthy uh, and, and dirty environment in our communities. And so we need to demand uh, that we clean clean up the streets. Clean and safe streets is something that I believe a lot of independent voters are looking for a solution on, and they're not finding it with Democrats. And perhaps the Republicans haven't been as vocal about those issues. You know, someone who's done a good job on this, uh, Melanie Burkholder in District 1, Carlsbad. She ran a campaign... Uh, against the mileage tax, which is a, a fiscal issue, but she also really hammered the issue of clean and safe streets and talked about the homeless crisis. And that connected and resonated in District 1 Carlsbad, which is a very Democrat seat. Uh, and she uh, she won by a comfortable margin in, in that district. So um, I do think there are some candidates that are showing great promise on the coast. And uh, I'd like to see those candidates continue to 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 lead and 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 get others like them. Sure. Do you overall? I haven't looked at the numbers yet. Were you impressed, underwhelmed with Republican voter turnout in San Diego County, and what do you sort of attribute those numbers to? I think that uh, we always can do better, um, and I think the reason why people don't vote is they're not excited. Get back to that issue that I said that you need candidates who can excite voters. But they're not soft serve vanilla ice cream that someone actually who's a low propensity voter will say, you know what, it's worth me spending a little time to vote. Um, we also need uh, to rebuild our high school and college um, canvasser programs. Uh, high school and college kids uh, have always been the lifeblood of a successful campaign. Democrats certainly have those uh, kids uh, showing up to their campaigns because of the bizarre uh, curriculum that they're exposed to in classrooms. Um, we need to go out there and get these high school and college kids that are center right, moderates and conservatives, and uh, get them involved so that they can do door to door canvassing and, and encourage people to vote. Um, that's how you're going to be able to spike voter turnout. But if, if we had all the registered Republicans actually show up and vote, 
uh, a lot of these races would have been different in terms of the outcome. I think a lot of Republicans also are, are concerned about election integrity, and they think, well, my vote's not going to count anyway, so why bother? And that nothing could be further than the truth on that. Yes, we have problems with the way we conduct elections in California. No one should conduct elections the way we conduct them in California. It's just absurd. But every vote is so important, um, and we have to win by a larger margin to account for the fact that I do believe that there are ineligible votes that are being counted in um, many of these races, uh, and that the rate of ineligible voting is much too high. It, it should be minuscule. It should be uh, the rare, rare, rare exception. Um, and we should be able to de detect it easier. Uh, but right now, the way we vote in California, we use outdated voter lists. We mail everyone out a ballot, which means you don't have chain of custody. Uh, we don't really do a good enough job on signature review. And um, public trust and confidence, therefore, erodes. And we can't have a healthy democracy when um, people don't believe the outcome of, of the election. And that's both Democrat and Republicans. Remember, in 2016, Hillary Clinton uh, did not accept the uh, the result of the election, felt that there was something wrong with it, that there was cheating. Uh, in 2020, Trump said the same thing. And when you look at the polling from those periods, a third of the American people bought that. And so one third of, of, our, of our country not believing the winner actually is the real winner, we can't survive that. So we have to fix our election system. And I think that will improve voter turnout on both sides as well. Okay, what I'm sort of hearing is that there's the uh, discussion about um, sort of voters are disengaged because they're having concerns about the process. But it seems as though, correct me if I'm making a wrong assessment here, but that the Republican Party itself needs to do a better job organizational wise to mobilize turnout. Um, Absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, the Democrats, they're hungry. They're out there hustling. They've got um, uh, all the infrastructure and all the money that they need. Uh, and some people say, well, Carl, the reason why we don't have, have that same caliber of a campaign is because we don't have the money. Look, the special interest money, the corporate money, the union money, it goes all to Democrats in California. Why? Because they're the ones in power. The, the special interests, big business, big labor, they will give money to the powerful. Um, in terms of a grassroots campaign, though, you can still compete if you are smart and work together as a team. And so I want to continue to challenge the Republican Party and candidates, do better, do better at volunteer recruitment, do better at reaching out to high school and college students, do better at raising small dollar donors uh, funds, $25 at a, at a time, uh, so that you can get your message out. Uh, we won seats where we were outspent, you know, two to one, three to one. Um, so you don't need to match the special interest dark money in these races, but you do need to have enough at, to at least get your message out. Sure. Um, I'm going to go sort of bigger picture here for a second. So statewide, um, well, I'll, I'll just start with this. Mitch McConnell um, made a comment back in August that he felt as though the Republicans had an issue with candidate quality. Um, I know, I know. I mean, imagine us putting up someone who lied about a stroke and couldn't actually put sentences together. Uh, you know, look, don't tell me about candidate quality when the other side also had obscenely bad candidates. This was a failure of Republican leaders to offer bold, uh, exciting ideas. Uh, and, you know, say what you want about Donald Trump, but he excites the, the base. He energizes the voters. Um, for good or bad, uh, but but he energizes the voters. He's very specific and audacious about his policy proposals. Uh, and so I'd like to see Republicans actually get a little passion, a little energy, uh, and get creative and get bold with the solutions that they're offering. I think the American people are hungry for that. Sure. So I don't think, you know, look, candidate quality certainly does impact certain races. There's no doubt about it. But just, just to hang the whole thing on that, really transfers the accountability and responsibility from someone like a Mitch McConnell, who's supposed to be the one setting the agenda and coming up with the the overall message for these candidates. Sure. I don't know if you followed, um, did you follow any of the, the countywide school board races, that sort of thing? Um, oh, we had, we recruited school board candidates. We yeah. held several parent coalition summits to organize parent coalitions in districts. Sure. And so 
you know, so we've made some progress there, but it's still not enough. We, we, we got to continue to fight for those seats every cycle. Yeah, because correct me if I'm making an overgeneralization here, but it seems like the last couple of years we've been seeing the increased polarization and politicization really of school board um, candidacies in terms of these school boards are really becoming, these races are really becoming battlegrounds over ideology, philosophy, um, especially on some of the um, the controversial issues, you know, um, how LGBTQ plus issues factor into education. And um, that's been a huge debate here locally in Encinitas with the um, um, Encinitas um, Union School Board. Wait, 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 wait. I have to correct you on this because every time the media describes our pro-parent back to basic candidates as quote uh, against racial equity and lgbt issues it is absurd i'm a gay republican all right i support these candidates because they want to go back to basics they want reading writing and arithmetic they do not oppose racial equity they don't oppose uh, LGBT rights and dignity and respect. Uh, what they are concerned about are uh, politicized curriculum like critical race theory that in, in essence are, are, are introducing ra racially divisive concepts uh, and erroneous U.S. history uh, into the minds of our kids. What they are concerned about is talking about sex change operations in first, second, and third grade. Uh, and guess what? When you do the polling, the American people overwhelmingly agree with us. 70% say, yeah, you probably shouldn't be talking about transgender uh, sex reassignment surgeries in, in the first, second, or third grade. Maybe we need to really look at uh, the appropriateness uh, in terms of age-appropriate content. And maybe we should also make sure that parents have a seat at the table on the curriculum. So, you hand out you know, I, but but I want to be very clear about this. It is an absolute disservice to describe the people who oppose the 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 the, the far left school board members as you know somehow against the racial equity or LGBT you know dignity and respect. That's just not true. Uh, they want to get our kids to where they're achieving academically, and they want parents to have a voice in these more uh, controversial social topics, and, and they want to strike a balance. They want to do it right, not in a politicized way, but in a balanced way. Which party, though, do you think won more control San Diego County-wise with the school board races? Like, was there any clear winner, Republican or Democrat? Do you want me to get out the list? I got the list right here, actually, because, you know, we, we do have our, our, we've been tracking uh, the results of the school board races. And part of what we've been trying to do is, um, you know, we we made a lot of progress this year in actually recruiting school board candidates for as many school board races as possible. Um, and we did better than we've ever done before in recent memory uh, in, in covering school board races. And the second thing we've done is try to give them um, support through our voter guide. So here in San Diego County, we did a clean sweep of Alpine Union School District, a clean sweep of Bonsall Unified School District, uh, we flipped a seat in Cajon Valley. Um, Carlsbad, it looks like Gretchen Verbuff uh, uh, will likely win. Um, the trustee area five, Scott Davison, she, uh, he fell a little short. Sharon McKeeman fell short. Um, let me just say on that one, uh, you can advise a candidate on how to run a good campaign. Whether the candidate takes your advice or not is up to them. So sure. candidates that didn't run good campaigns fell short, and they shouldn't have had. Uh, Chula Vista, Dalia Dominguez Cervantes, oh, a rock star. She won down there, which is a big shift in the, the board down there. Um, Del Mar Union School District, Scott Wooden uh, won. Uh, Andre Johnson fell short in Encinitas. Uh, so I'd like to see a little bit more progress in Encinitas. Okay. Uh, San Diego. Uh, uh, that was a disappointment, although uh, in San Diego, uh, we did pick up the uh, Fan Anderson seat, um, uh, and so that's going to be a, a nice change there. Um, the uh, Overall, you're pretty pleased, though, with the county. Overall, yeah. I'm looking at so Oceanside. Uh, we, uh, we fell short in Oceanside, so we have a lot of work there. Palomar Community College District, we, we actually flipped control of the entire community college district there. So we were very pleased there. Um, and then what else? Solana Beach, uh, we didn't do well there. So in some of these areas where uh, Vista, 
those races were super close. I haven't updated it since uh, two days ago. So I know that we still have District 2 and 3 in Vista as too close to call as of two days ago. So um, look, we're not going to stop fighting for our kids. We're going to keep recruiting quality school board candidates and holding school board members accountable for academic achievement. You know, in the state of California, two thirds of students are failing math proficiency. Two thirds are failing. It's not that two thirds are achieving math and a third is, is failing. No, it's two thirds are failing. Uh, and when you take a look at uh, the English and uh, the reading and writing proficiencies, it's a majority of students in California are failing. Then you look at what's going on with Latino and African-American students and low-income students, and the numbers are in the 80% range of failure. So uh, we have to do better. Uh, and, and, and you know the idea that these um, school board members are running and dangling uh, this concept of racism in front of uh, voters' face, saying, uh, oh, vote for me because my, my opponent's a racist. No, well, you know, you failed our kids. They can't read or write or add. So it, it's time for you to go packing and it's time to give someone else a chance to uh, take care of these kids and get them back on track. So we cannot give up on these schools. Uh, when people say, oh, it's more politicized than ever. The, the reason why there's more controversy in the schools is that the left quietly took over the schools over the past 20 years. And now parents have woken up, particularly during COVID, because they were actually at home uh, listening in on the distance learning, the online learning, and saying, what are they trying to teach you? And so when parents actually had a couple months of engagement, uh, I think that really opened uh, their eyes. And the left actually went way too far with things like critical race theory and the sex ed curriculum. So um, what you're seeing right now is the effort to take back our schools and get them back on track. Sure. Um, I know you only have a few minutes, so I just wanted to briefly ask you in terms of the statewide propositions and then also some of the majors that were floated in the county. Did anything stand out to you? Did anything win or lose that surprised you one way or the other? Can we please go another election cycle without a kidney dialysis measure? I mean, wouldn't that be nice? Sure. Um, you know that there's a special interest grab when they continue to shove something on the ballot that voters have repeatedly said no to. Um, and so uh, on the statewide ballot measures, uh, we were just very happy that we defeated the tax increase that was on the ballot, Prop 30. Um, and then locally, uh, there's, no, there's not a whole lot of um, effort put into st stopping tax increases, particularly sales tax increases. The business community says, well, the, the working family has to pay that, not us. Um, and that's something that uh, is one of the reasons why Reform California exists, is that we will fight the fights that are hard, that we don't have a lot of resources for, particularly the tax hike measures. So uh, defeating uh, Measure P in El Cajon, Measure E in, in um, uh, 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 Escondido, uh, had we not stepped forward and organized those campaigns, those would probably have passed in Solana Beach, uh, their sales tax measure uh, passed. Um, and uh, again, we have some work to do in those areas to open the eyes of voters mm -hmm. and let them see how much waste uh, is happening with their existing tax dollars. Sure. Um, out of the other state propositions, I mean, 26, 27 failed. Uh, Prop 1 passed, no be surprised. Um, yeah, I mean, did any of those outcomes tell you anything, uh, I mean, from the sort of conservative perspective about uh, the direction in which our state is headed? Well, we have a lot of work to do in California. Um, I think Californians are are at their heart, um, well, at their mind, they are fiscally conservative. Sure. But at their heart, they're socially liberal progressive. Um, the problem is, is that uh, simply saying you're against racism or that you are for the working folk, uh, that's cheap. It's just rhetoric. When you actually want to talk racism and racial disparities, Democrats are in charge of our school districts, and yet African-American and uh, Latino kids are failing. They're the ones that are disproportionately failing in these school districts that are run by Democrats. So who's the racist? 
I hear all the time about traffic tickets and cops and racial disparities. Why don't we actually have more attention on the fact that the schools for in the minority communities are the worst schools in the state and they're run by Democrats? How about we have a little honesty and transparency there? Um, and so I think that if we can get our message out, there, there are a lot of very reasonable Californians that will say, wow, I didn't know this was happening and maybe we need a change. Um, and and you know, the, the number one question I ask people all the time on the left is, have you had enough yet? Have you had enough homelessness? Have you had enough crime? Have you had enough cost of living? Have you had enough of the schools failing? Because if you have, then maybe you should try the other side for a little bit. See what happens. Sure. Um, last couple of minutes, uh, any, any closing thoughts, anything you want to promote or. Um... We have a lot of work to do on the coast. Uh, the, the coast you know, in California, if you take a look at the voting patterns, the more you go inland, the more conservative, uh, the independents are the, the higher percentage of registered Republicans there are. Uh, but it seems on the coast that Californians have had a problem and you can see this in orange County as well. Um, and I, I think, again, that has to deal with these uh, voters who are concerned about the you know, quality of life issues in the community. Uh, so those are issues that Republicans need to do a much better job communicating on homelessness, the environment. Well, also, let's talk about development. Uh, Republicans always got the, uh, the the reputation of being on the side of builders and Democrats were the ones that were for you know neighborhood quality of life. Well, now you're seeing that it's the Democrats that want to put a homeless shelter on every corner. Take a look at what happened in the poor city of Encinitas. They literally turned over uh, the parking lot to the homeless people. And then of course, regionally, a lot of non-Encinitas uh, individuals came in to that town because the parking lot was surrendered to the homeless uh, population. Uh, or what happened in Encinitas when uh, the city council said, oh, we're against a big development project. And then they used the uh, the the uh, attorney general, a threat from the attorney general uh, to uh, to approve the project. They just rolled over uh, because it's a wink and a nod. So if you want to take a look at the folks that are uh, in the pockets of developers, it's 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 the Democrats. So I'm talking to a lot of voters who are Democrat, independent, who are concerned about super dense development. Um, and the homeless shelters and the you know dedicated homeless camps, and they want they want change. Uh, Republicans need to be able to communicate and deliver on those issues. Sure. Well, thanks so much for coming on, Carl. Again, Carl DeMaio hosts um, the Carl DeMaio Show on News Radio 600 KOGO. Really enjoyed this conversation. Thanks for talking elections with us, and hope to have you on the show soon. Thanks so much. Awesome. Thanks so much. All right. Appreciate it. This has been another episode of Stay Classy San Diego with your host, Steve Wire. Thanks again to our sponsors, Max Lux Media at maxluxmedia.com and Barntime Productions at barntimemusic.com. And thanks to all of our listeners for tuning in and viewing the show. We'll see you next time. Stay classy, San Diego.